You know, the type of work that we do in TCI is quite different from most of the other graduate PhD research programs. What we take very seriously here is the, the idea that a PhD research question has to be something that's meaningful at the ground level. We also take it as a, a serious part of our mission to, to do applied work on the ground, to do it in, in places where we are addressing the problem with the people who are facing the problem. The idea that somehow academic rigor and field work are two separate things is something that I like to kind of disprove. I like to put, show that you can do both. You know, field work gives economists an opportunity to, uh, to create a sort of exogenous variation in the problem that they're studying. So it offers you a chance to, uh, to, to be methodologically rigorous. And, and I wanted to do an experiment as part of my uh, uh, dissertation. I did my field work in Charkhand. So uh, uh, the goal of my project was to understand better the role of subjective perceptions that high school students have about uh, labor market um, outcomes and labor market uh, returns that are associated with, uh, with three main different post-secondary education tracks. I wanted to collect uh, and study uh, the role of subjective beliefs. That is what students actually use when they make these decisions uh, to decide on what to study uh, after they finish school. And uh, that's kind of a new um, angle to looking at these type of problems uh, within the field of economics and education. The project was in Ranchi, which is the capital city of Jharkhand. And we worked with students who were part of intermediate colleges. So these are equivalent to 11th and 12th grade students. We worked with about 1,500 students across 10 uh, colleges and four districts that I wanted to collect. Uh, data that would normally not be feasible for a standard uh, household survey or a standard sort of uh, survey that a government or an institution uh, does. So, it, uh, so, so this, the, this type of method or the elicitation of subjective beliefs is, is much more um, intensive. It requires a lot more time than would be possible in a standard survey that wants to collect a breadth of information on a lot of different things. Your turn, Mari. I did my master's research in India with TCI with goats in Rajasthan. And then going into my PhD, I really saw the lack of feed that is available for livestock in India. It's a huge problem. The livestock are very undernourished. The cropping system is very integrated with the livestock system. And there's a potential for livelihood improvements if we could improve the overall livestock system. So when you're trying to improve a livestock system, there's three main avenues you could take. There's genetics. There's health, so veterinary care and treating diseases, et cetera, vaccines, and nutrition. So nutrition tends to be one of the more complicated to do. It's different in all different places. There's not as easy of a fix as genetics and health. So usually projects that go in, they'll first get the health, because that's really easy. You provide vaccines, vet care, et cetera. Next, they'll go in with genetics, so they'll provide some superior stock, and over some years try and upgrade the breeding. And then nutrition is usually kind of left out there in the wings. So that was my overall reasoning for trying to look at this project and try and improve nutrition in the livestock system. A lot of these people are, are so impoverished that they don't have the opportunity to eat their own livestock, they sell it. There's a lot of money in goats right now and most goats are in the hand, hands of smallholder farmers. So if we could improve the production system, we could really divert income to the people that own the goats. So I ended up doing an experiment and so I had one control group where they were just operating in their open grazing system with very little management and then compared that to a treatment group where I provided feed and had a semi-intensive goat feeding system and then over the course of nine months I compared a number of different health parameters between the two systems and then also worked with the people to see what they thought about the system, how we could change it, etc. You were a foreigner living in a very remote area uh, and there were all kinds of challenges around that. Can mm -hmm. you talk a bit about that? I was working in the really rural areas of the Kandamal district in Arissa and it's a particularly vulnerable tribal group area and so for that reason usually foreigners are not allowed to go there. I do speak a little Hindi but I don't speak any Oriya uh, so I had a translator. So I'm completely dependent on this person. This person is 
my lifeline. When you don't understand the language, then you're kind of at the mercy of the people that are communicating with you. Tanvi, what was the biggest surprise that you had in the field? Something that you'll remember years from now. I think there's a lot of there's a lot of things about field work that don't go according to plan. So we thought that we'd get all these lists from uh, from the colleges, which we did, and uh, and you know. Obviously, given the population, there are like tons and tons of students in the registers. So we were like, this is great. We're just going to like, have, we have all these registers with us. We're just going to randomize, you know, digitize all of this, randomize, and then go to these colleges and like tell the students who are part of our survey that they need to participate. And I knew it wouldn't be as smooth as that, but I didn't expect at all uh, how far from reality that would be because once you actually go to these colleges, there's probably like less than 5% of the students who are registered or, 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 on, or on the registers who actually attend. Even though there's so many students who are supposed to be in these colleges, just actually finding our sample was really difficult. I think on the positive side of it, um, I think what came as a surprise to me was how much I think the project meant to my enumerators and the team that I was working with. I think it was a very big sort of event in their lives and it kind of almost changed the trajectory of you know, what kind of things they wanted to do after the project. Not everyone has gone out and done what you have done. Uh, do you feel that things that you've learned and insights that you're bringing in that gives you an edge up over them or that give you something new and different compared to what they were doing? Or do you feel like, you know, it would have been so much easier just to to do, hang out and do the data work and get a thesis done. Of course it would have been easier. <laughs> Why didn't you start, Maureen? I mean, I think, I mean, that, before I even started this PhD, I knew that the field work is a, was a part of this program, and that was a huge draw for me in that in my PhD program, I also get all this work and management experience, so it's kind of a, it's a big bang for your buck in my mind. You know, people that don't have the opportunity to do field work like this, they never have to manage a project um, and they just don't develop that skill set. Of course, when you're in the field and dealing with some of these challenges, it could feel, it definitely will feel like a burden and it'll be like, I don't want to deal with X, Y, and Z problem right now. I just want to focus on my statistics. I just want to like do my research. That's what I want to do. But in the long haul, it's really valuable to have that experience. There are many times during field work that you feel uh, that you may feel disappointed or dismayed or discouraged and uh, so you need to really believe in what you're doing. So don't take on a project or a field project that you don't believe in 100% because you just have one year, right? And you, you're one person and uh, you, your entire PhD sort of revolves around this pretty high risk undertaking that you're, that you're doing that probably has implications for your first job which has implications for like your career trajectory. So it's just, it's a huge, I mean, I see, I think of it as a huge investment. You know, going out and collecting data is, is an important part of what, what we do. Um, but you could also be collecting data for someone else's study. What's unique here is you're actually designing the study. You're designing what data needs to be collected, what metrics need to be established, then designing the questionnaire, and then doing the survey, doing all the project management around it. So you're, you're getting a complete holistic experience of doing field-based research. And that's crucial, because that then stays with you for the rest of your life.